I guess it's just me today. So, uh, uh, obviously, uh, I've just brought in a couple weeks ago. How's the transition been to Louisville so far? Uh, man, it's been great. Um, you know, when you're surrounded by such, uh, such great people, it makes your transition a lot easier. Um, Coach Satterfield and, um, and our offensive staff from top to bottom is um, phenomenal. And uh, th this group that I get a chance to coach every day has made my transition a lot easier, too. It's great kids. They work really hard. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's been good. It's been a lot. And it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a crazy past few weeks, but it's, uh, it's been good. Have you had a chance to properly you know, get to really know all the guys in the tight end room so far? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's, that's something I'm big on is relationships. And I told those guys from day one, um, we're, we're, we're going to build a family relationship and uh, we're all going to be a close, tight-knit group. And uh, we're, we're building that over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I told them I'm, I'm big on trust and respect. And, uh, and both of those are earned um, for, for me and for them. And, um, and they've kind of bought into that, man. And we've, uh, we've been able to stack great days on top of great days. And, and getting to know those guys uh, has been really fun. And it's a fun group to coach. How did the conversations go about with Scott Satterfield prior to accepting this? And what made you want to uh, leave uh, Georgia State after you just gotten the uh, promotion to OC? Yeah, it, uh, it, honestly, it came out of nowhere. Um, I was uh, I had just come off a practice field and and, uh, and had some text messages and and um, it kind of it kind of took off from there. It came out of nowhere, um, and that's that's usually how these things happen. But um, uh, you know, uh, wasn't wasn't looking to leave Georgia State. Like I said, it, it kind of came out of nowhere. Coach Elliott has been had been really good to me at Georgia State, and uh, we had. A lot of talented kids coming back. We had a really good group. I think we had like 95% of our production offensively coming back. And I finally got the chance to, to coach the quarterbacks and be an offensive coordinator, um, which is something I'd always wanted to do. Um, but uh, getting to the Power 5 level and, um, and, uh, and doing that's always been a goal of mine too. So um, it's kind of crazy how it all worked out. Um, but, but very, very blessed and very fortunate to be in the situation that I'm in with, um, like I said, with, with great people and, uh, and, and great kids that I get to coach every day. I know it's only been a couple weeks of spring practice since you joined, but what's, what are some of your impressions of that tight end room so far? Uh, it's a great group. Um, I tell you, first and foremost, it's, uh, they're really good kids. Uh, they, they work extremely hard every day, um, which is, you know, I tell them, you know, their, their attitude and their effort is something they're in complete control of every day. Uh, and, and they've been great. Um, they've been a lot of fun to coach. Um, and and Ed, that, that group as a whole has, has gotten better every single day this spring. Uh, and that's something that I challenge them with, you know, try to get 1% better every day. Um, and, and that group's really uh, really taken, taken on that mindset. And they've applied themselves in the meeting room and at practice uh, fundamentally, assignment-wise. Um, I've put that group, all of them, in some uncomfortable situations, some, some, uh, make them play in some spots where they haven't necessarily played. Um, and, uh, you know, I tell them all the time, part of growth is, is being uncomfortable. And uh, there's been some times where they've been uncomfortable this spring, and it's, uh, it's going to pay off for them. But I'm, I'm really proud of that group as a whole. Uh, quick follow-up. How have they kind of – you say you kind of put them – or put an emphasis on putting them in kind of uncomfortable situations. How have they kind of responded to those challenges? I mean, they've been great. Um, and there's, there's a lot of stuff that we, we got to get better at and a lot of teaching that we do every day. Um, but uh, they, they, they've really accepted it, and then um, they, they, they've challenged themselves every day to, to try to get better at something that they haven't really done a whole lot of. I mean, I, I, Isaac Martin's in the slot playing a lot of slot receiver, doing some stuff on the perimeter. Um, Marshawn's in the box uh, mixing it up, putting his face on people, stuff that he hadn't done a whole lot of. Um, you know, the same with, uh, with all those guys. They've, uh, they've, they've really accepted the challenge of going out every day and, 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 and putting themselves in some positions that they haven't necessarily been in and – and uh, they've gotten better. And uh, I, like I said, I, part of part of growth is being uncomfortable. I told us, look, I said, I'm as uncomfortable as, as you guys are in a brand new offense. So um, they they've been great. They they've helped me a lot, and uh, they've taught me probably more than I've taught them. But it's uh it's been a lot of fun. Coach, hey, it's Jody Dumling with Cardinal Authority. Um, how do you, as far as Marshawn is concerned, mean? When you come in and get a new job, do you uh, do you go back and watch all the film? You know, I mean, you can read things and, and the coaches can tell you things. I guess, how do you get up to speed on what he can do and, and what do you feel like is the next step for him? Yeah, that's the, you know, uh, coaching the tight end position for the last five years at Georgia State. Um, uh, I, you know, a, every week I, I try to watch uh, a, a different team or uh, a different player that I've, that I've known for a while. 
Um, and, and Marshawn's been been a high level tight end in this conference uh, for a while. So I, I knew of him before I got here. And then obviously once you get here, you want to you want to study the film, uh, see what he does really well, so you can put him in in positions to be successful. Um, and then I'll obviously uh, take the things that he doesn't do really well and try to work on them and, and try to hone those skills every day. Um, he's a phenomenal athlete, um, phenomenal football player. Uh, really good football players make really good football coaches. So uh, he's been so much fun to coach. But he's you know he's such a great player, but he wants to be coached. And uh, he comes in every day with a with a list of questions. Um, wants to be coached on the on the little details, the fundamentals, and and that's something that I tell him all the time. You know, I, I want him to be a fundamental assassin when he goes on the field, and um, and not just in the pass game and doing stuff on the perimeter, which he's really really good at. Um, but getting in the box and uh, and, and being a willing blocker, because um, that's the stuff that's going to pay off for him when he gets ready to go to the next level. Um, and that's that's what people want to see is see is it, see him get in the box and mix it up and be able to do different things in the run game. And, and we've challenged him. I've challenged him this spring to do a lot of that stuff, and he's 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 really applied himself and and gotten better. Coach, you you've got a room where a couple of guys last year, Christian and Vic, didn't they redshirted? They set out. A couple of other guys got limited experience. How I know you've only been here for a month or so, but you've had a lot of practices. How have some of the other guys kind of come on? Uh, that that group's done great. Um, you know, a, a lot of those guys have played a, a decent amount of ball. I mean, when you talk about a guy like uh, Isaac Martin, who's who's played a. Uh, a good bit of football in some spots. Um, and like I said, he's, he's done really good. I've put him in some uncomfortable spots, trying to, trying to get him on the perimeter to do some different things. Um, and he's, he's, he's really accepted that. Uh, Francis Sherman's done great uh, trying to get him to do some, some different stuff. Um, and uh, I, I'm really proud of both of those guys. Uh, DJ Martin's another kid who's, who's done great. And like I said, put him in some uncomfortable spots, trying to get him to do some different stuff. Has had a really good spring. Uh, Josh Lifson's had a really good spring. Um, a kid who's capable of going out and playing some snaps for us and doing a lot of different stuff for us. And, um, and then Dez Melton's done a great job as well. Um, mixing it up uh, in line, sniffer out on the, on the perimeter, doing some different stuff. So like I said, I've tried to get those guys to, to get more comfortable um, and with it, with the entire offense, not just doing things that they've done in the past, but trying to to make them a little bit more multidimensional, um, and, and and trying to get them more more used to and more comfortable with playing other positions in this offense, not just being attached or being in the box and being out on the perimeter. Trying to get them to kind of do it all, and uh, they, they've it's been tough on them and it's been uncomfortable, but they've done a really good job of working hard and, and having great attitudes every day and and uh, and, and really getting better. Josh, uh, kind of building off of that, I know you've only been here for a limited time comparatively to the rest of the other coaches, but what are some of your overall thoughts uh, on this offense and what and uh, what the tight end room can help uh, help it accomplish? Uh, man, offensively, this is uh, this is probably and, and I've been in some pretty good offenses in uh, in, in my time at this level, um, but this is probably probably the best offense I've ever been a part of. Um, man, it's, it's special from from top to bottom. Um, and you know this this position group is it's a really fun position to play and it's a fun position to coach because man you got everything, you've got all the run game, you've got all the protections, you've got all the pass game stuff out on the perimeter, um, you're involved in everything. So it's it's a lot on this position and you got to have a headsy football player who's who's smart enough to pick everything up and and kind of cerebral and with a high football IQ. So it's been it's been uh, it's been really fun. Like I said, we got we got a phenomenal group of kids that we get to come in and work with every day. And then uh, staff-wise, man, it's, 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 um, it's a great group. Uh, I've known uh, LT, Coach Taylor. I've known him for a while. Um, I have an identical twin brother who's a receivers coach at South Carolina. LT was in his wedding. Um, I've known Coach Sims for a long time, Coach Carwell for a long time, um, and obviously my brother coached with Coach Satterfield at App State. So, uh, um, and Pete Thomas has been phenomenal, the quarterback's coach. As a, as a former quarterback, man, he and I have, have, have really hit it off. So it's, it's a great staff great group of group of kids to work with every day but this group if they'll if they'll keep working and apply themselves they got a chance to be really special hey josh michael mccann with cardinal authority kind of want to shift gears a little bit um, when you were hired some of the buzz that was going around is man this guy can recruit um, <laughs> what goes into becoming what is known as a, a great recruiter and how much do you enjoy that part of the process man I, that is probably my favorite part of it um because i'm all about relationships uh with the kids that are in my room there's those 10 kids that i get to go coach every day um, to the kids that I recruit, uh, I, I want to build great relationships. And uh, I'm a relationships-driven person. 
And uh, the, the the recruit, that's all recruiting is, is, is building relationships with that player, with that player's coach, with that player's family. Um, and I really take the same mindset to recruiting that I do coming into the office every day, man. I, I, nobody's going to work harder than me um, and, and be a relentless recruiter. And uh, th those kids are going to hear from me in some way, shape, or form. They're going to hear from me every day and because um, I want to stay fresh on their mind. I want them to know how important they are to me, how important they are to the success of this football program. And, uh, and and really just try to try to try to communicate with them on a daily basis and, and build that relationship and and, uh, and and let them know that I'm going to be here for them. It's, it's more than ball. Uh, when they get here, I'm going to develop them as much off the field as I am on the field. And uh, and that's something that I tell our guys all the time. And if you, in your time here, if all I do is teach you how to run a route or, or block or or teach you a concept, then I failed you as a coach. Um, I want to teach you the game of life, man. And and so much more to, to life than ball. Um, obviously, it's a great vehicle to get you where you want to go. Um, it did the same for me as a player. Um, but uh, really just attack the recruiting, man. I'm, I'm big on relationships, so building that relationship, like I said, with that player and his coach and his family and um, and, and making them feel important. But, Josh, I, I jumped on a minute while you were answering your first question. Okay. Just your first talk with, Scott, with, with Coach Satterfield, obviously, like you said, the, you had so many connections um, mm -hmm. I assume that was kind of it, but but when you first heard from him, was it something that you automatically wanted to do? Is is to make this move? Well, uh, I, I actually didn't talk to Coach Satterfield until after he had talked to Coach Elliott, because uh, there was a, a different dynamic in the fact that that they were their college roommates, <laughs> and um, and and Coach Satterfield thanks to the world world of Sean Elliott, and 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 it's and it's likewise. I mean, I can't tell you how many Scott Satterfield stories I heard at uh, at Georgia State with Sean. Um, so it was it was kind of a weird dynamic to navigate because we wanted to handle it the right way. Um, so uh, I actually didn't talk to him until uh, after he had talked to to, to Sean. And uh, at, at that point, it was kind of a well, uh, here's what we got. What what are we going to do? And uh, this is a jump that I've been uh, wanting to make for a while um, and and challenge myself at this level um, from a football standpoint, a recruiting standpoint. It's something that I've been excited about. And I've wanted to do for a while, so uh, it was kind of it was kind of an opportunity I couldn't turn down to to be at this level, to be with a guy that I know is who's more, most importantly uh, a phenomenal person and a really good football coach. And then, uh, like I said, being able to surround myself with people that are great people that I want to work with every day was is um, was kind of a no brainer. You guys, good. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, coach. Uh, hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Look forward to meeting y'all. Yep, appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks.